All right, back on here for another day. So they decided not to take the vehicle with them today, or the bike. I'll leave it for a few week or two more. I can finish it, at least get it further along anyway. All right, so today we're gonna try to get this thing running. So we gotta get the uh, primary cover on here. Uh, I'm not worried about the chain guard right now. Need to get a carburetor uh, onto the bike. Need to get the generator up in there. And uh, get this side of the bike finished up. I was going to use this dummy generator here so we can start up and run it because that's a massive oil leak when that hole's open right there. That makes a big mess when that thing blows stuff out of it. So we picked up a couple of chrome generators to stuff in the hole. One of those might even work, who knows. We'll figure it out. On this side of the bike we got to hook up all these oil lines, get the exhaust system up in here, get the brakes up in here. Evidently this doesn't work or doesn't want to work. I gotta figure out what's wrong with the master cylinder. So I gotta figure that out too. But I mean, a lot of little stuff. I'm gonna get a battery up in here and at least put some cables on it so I can crank this thing over and start it. So lots of little stuff, things to get done. So I got some exhaust studs here. I'm gonna put up there in the heads. That's a lot better way of going. That strip the heads out and they stay tighter longer. The key is to use a standard mechanical lock washer. That works fairly well. Except that one's dead. These aren't very good. So I think we'll give me a couple brand new ones that are a lot stiffer. I'm trying to reuse some of his his stuff, but oh well. These here have a lot more holding power. So there you go. Yeah. There's my missing rag. Scooby with steel on it. Oh well. <sighs> Extra one to do. So these have a lot more holding power. <clears throat> this seems to work the best for holding exhaust in. This is for me anyway. Uh, let's see here. I'm not worried about wiring. We'll hot wire the bike. So I got to put a coil on, on the other side too. All right. So a lot of little stuff to do. Oh, and put oil in it. So I'm going to put uh, some break-in oil in it. And then I'm going to put a top it off with some uh, 2560 Maxima. That'll make it work. And we got the other quart of oil over there that we probably put in the crank. All right, so which one of these two are we gonna use? See, this one appears to have the strap in the right place. This one's wrong. I like this one. Less work. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. There you go. That goes in the bike. All right, so I'm gonna take these two nuts off here and uh, goop up a gasket right here. We'll stick it to the case, not the generator, because it's coming back out. Well, that's what we're going to do for now. <clears throat> Get on it. It's not too cold today. It's in the low, mid 60s, so a nice cold breeze blowing in here, but better than the 50s and 40s, like it's been. All right.
get to one side of the gasket, you can take it back off. So. If you put a little bit of oil on the other side, it won't tear the gasket either. It's another trick you do. We're going to leave it dry. We're not tightening up that much. strap be in the right place, just enough enough is the case. Full starter before you let go. Make sure you hold the generator up as you're tightening it. To keep the bolt square. Don't cross through that way. The threads feel like crap though. At least the top one does. stays on forever. We'll tighten it up a little bit. Leave yourself loose, more than likely. Don't forget about it. And you'll leave it on it. There you go. Full torque. Should know better. Okay, we've got one thing done now. Okay, where is screwdriver? Missing screwdriver, where'd you go? There it is. Bolts for the primary cover. In this case, are screws. Oop. Take long to start dropping stuff. So these are the stock screws. They're straight slot. Pretty long. Hopefully they work. So we've got to find a cover for here too. I don't know where that's heading at. This is supposed to be all clean already. It isn't. It's filthy. Yeah, these people don't do anything to help. 
All right, we'll be back. Okay, I'm digging through all the junk here, looking for what I need. So this is all the electrical stuff laid out here. <clears throat> Found a few things in a junk box. Let's clear all that crap out. So here's the footboards we'll need at some point. And cables and stuff I'm not working on right now. At least I get an idea what we got for parts here. <clears throat> some of it. So here's the clamps and stuff, the valve system. Here's the coil. That's the footboard mounting kit in there. And here's the inspection cover I need for here. So I got this all cleaned up now. So you never do get all that buffing rouge out, but at least it's not the grayish black in there. Now we're gonna make this a wet primary. So everything's plugged up except for the vent right here, which we got coming out right now back here. We're right in this hose at. It goes up over the top, up over here. So when I put oil in these things, I put oil in until it just goes over the top of this. That's how much oil I put in it. So I look down through the hole when I'm pouring in. When I see the oil get up to the height of this, that's where I stop. That's enough to fling it around because this ring gear, this ring gear is an oil and flinging oil everywhere. So all you need is enough to keep the chain lube. You don't need extra. So you want to keep the oil out of the clutch because these clutches are not really a wet clutch, even though they're semi-wet by how they make them now. They're still not wet. So you put too much oil in there, the clutch will just slip and drag and not work right. All right, so that's what we're going to do on that. So I'm going to get this button on here now. we got a new gasket here we're going to use. I'm going to goop it up. Use my gasket goop right there. And get this cover on there. <clears throat> Hopefully everything goes on like it's supposed to. That'll be a first, all right? Okay, let's get the primary over here first. The little light really screws with the video, I know. Put the camera over there, it's not too bad. So one problem we're gonna maybe have down the road, but they've been uh, leaning over a little bit too far right here, and it's ground all the aluminum away. So you only got an eighth of an inch of ceiling area right there. So if I had time, I would have welded that up and really cleaned it out and made it a lot thicker through there. But oh well, you get what you get. All right. Should be a dowel pin up there, which I'm sure we don't have. Yep, it's supposed to be in there. And it looks like that hole is all screwed up, so it's not even gonna take a dowel. Oh well. If the starter more doesn't gauge correctly, we'll have to play around with the uh, primary location. So make sure you lift up on the primary cover before you tighten it down. Otherwise, you can have some issues. You don't look at me, do you? It goes on nice and thin, so it doesn't make a big layer of crap you got to deal with. Silicone just makes a huge mess. People use that crap. If you need it, you need it, but 99% of the time you don't need it. This gasket's actually got that red layer of silicone on it, which I'm not a big fan of, but it does help a little bit at times. See, that one's ready to go. Let's see if it'll stay on there.
See, I forgot to check the cover to see if that gasket was going to work. We'll be all right. They make an eight hole and nine hole gasket. Nine hole is over here, which this does not have. This is the ninth hole. Sometimes there's a gap that lets things go by, but we do have a solid gasket area along in here. That's plugged, so it doesn't matter. So this will seal. I've actually had them where the they overlap these slots and stuff and let oil out. Now this one here, hopefully, will seal way in the back corner. See, it's another low spot right there to leak out of. Because this here has a hole that's going to let oil into that. So the oil kind of works its way back and forth and through. You could take GB weld and stuff that thing solid if you wanted to. Wouldn't hurt. Might not be needed, who knows. If it leaks, then you know you gotta do something else. Like I said I've had issues in the past where the oil finds its way through to fall to different galleries, so oh well. Okay, we gotta put some uh, grease in the bearing. Need a little water grease, stick it in there. Who knows how long before oil gets up in here, so pre lube it. Okay. And the other thing we gotta do is put some grease and over here on the shaft. Make sure you got some grease in your shaft right here. And there's a brass washer that goes on there. This should be a copper washer. That's a little thin. He's either thick or not. But that'll work. So that gives you a stop for the, when the fork jams this thing out, it keeps from going through the cover. If you don't have the thrust washer there, it can eat itself through the cover at some point, which would be bad. Okay, so now we're ready to put our screws down in here. Stick it on a shaft right there first. Put it in and hold it. Hopefully the screws all line up. I already cleaned all the holes out, so the screws should go in. The screws won't go in. You force it in, you can blow out the back side of the uh, cover on the inside there. Because these holes are all full of silicone. It just makes basically a hydraulic wedge that blows it in, the inner primary out. Which is not good. Okay, that one was not lining up yet. Just torque the nose. Usually it's a gasket issue. Instead of forcing it, you take a Phillips screwdriver. Move it around, push on the cover right there. That'll hold the gasket and the screw should be able to go through at that point. There it goes. If you force it, then the gasket will be in the wrong spot. You just put a big gouge in it. It might leak. That's why you leave all the screws loose until they're all started. Okay, looks like they're all in there. A little torque on that one, a little on that one. Go down here and get these ones. Don't tighten them, just bring them up until they touch. Be 
These are taper head screws, so they're going to try to center the cover. Okay, grab your plastic hammer. We nudge it up slightly so we don't bind up the Benix up here. And then tighten them down. Get the three corners real quick here. And then you come back at the other ones in there. If the gasket sticks out quite a bit, you can push it in a little bit maybe. Just try to. Okay, everybody's got a little bit of torque on it now. So use your impact knocker. With all the screws, use an impact knocker to tighten with. Start in the middle, work your way out. Do it again. Screw shouldn't be moving very much now at this point. Obviously, if you hit it harder, it tightens it more. Tighten it too much, you can split it. So it takes practice to know what tight is. Oops. That head's getting kind of rounded down there. Okay, those are all in there. Now if you ride the bike a few miles, warm up a couple times, go back and retorque all this stuff. It's a big thick gasket, it does move. Okay, so that one's all done. Wipe off any excess see where it might be on the outside. Obviously, you want to make sure it's dry underneath. That way, when you put oil in, you'll see if it leaks. If you feel anything, you know it's leaking. You don't have to ride it to find out that it's leaking. I'm not sure what all that's about over here. Is it a taper? Something ain't into it, I don't know. Corrosion going there. I'll have to buff it up himself. Okay, so I'm going to leave that open for a few minutes, let it dry, and then I'll put some oil in there. Okay, so now I need to get to the other side of the bike and Play around on that side. I gotta work on the carburetor a little bit also. So I think I work on the oil lines. Oil lines are important. Pretty much we're stuck on this side for now. We stopped, I mean. Okay, so we don't want to lose this. This goes over here. That's gonna go back onto that. This is all extra crap we're not using at this point, so get it out of your way. Just clean up your area a little bit. These are the other screws here that go with the cover. There's only two of them in the bag. There's the other two I found. So if you get all this crap out of the way you're not going to use anymore, it's not such a big mess. You can find stuff. That's empty. All right. This stuff we're not gonna ever use anymore. I don't even know what that even is. Wouldn't hurt to get it out of your way completely. Oh, there's the missing picker I couldn't find. I knew it was around someplace. See, bags hide everything. It's called trash. Oh, there's a bunch of trash right there. A little big piece of trash. There you go. Hey, look what I can do with that. I can put this junky generator on. There. there. I'll put this stuff over here for now because we're not sure if we're going to ever need this or not. All right, you keep your area halfway clean, you can find stuff. Now, right now, it looks like I'm missing my motor mount. I haven't found one yet. We're going to be needing that too. All right, I'm going to go uh, do a quick search around for that again. I haven't found it yet. Let me take another quick look. We'll be back.
All right, I'm back. Spend more time looking for hardware and parts than anything else. Spend like an hour looking for a motor mount and hardware. Eh, ridiculous. It's quicker just to buy new stuff and be done with it. Looking for all this used crap everywhere. All right, well, either way, we got parts. All right, this is the bracket here. That's full of fucking stupid ass powder coat. That means it's going to loosen up because this stuff's going to squeeze and get loose. Okay, this is the factory bracket that holds the choke tube, which is this piece here. So this goes in here. This goes across like that. And of course, it does not fit through the powder coated piece of crap because I powder coated it. cheaper the powder coat, the thicker it is. Good powder coat is thin. You don't have these problems with it. At least we have our own protein tools called threads. There you go. Yeah, someone bothering me already. That didn't take long. Hello. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Okay, all right, bye. Okay, there, so that goes like this. Now you got something over there to poke you with over there. That's very important that you have something to poke you with. Okay, we're not gonna tighten it all the way, just semi-tight. Leave it semi-loose there, now we know it's loose. Okay, then this bracket goes on top of here, like this. Should run some kind of washer under here to protect your head. You just have to have a whole bunch of hardware laying around here. There's one. So, some nice thick ones to go over this. I got two of those. I do have two. So these are nice thick washers. Hopefully they're good ones. They go like that. Okay. Make sure you have enough room to put your bolt through there. Still, we do. I went and grabbed two new uh, locking nuts here. They had one lock nut and one flat nut. Don't use red. Use blue. Mm -hmm. Red will pull the stud out of the head. Blue might do it too, but red definitely will. You always want to want less Loctite on your nut than you do on what holds it together. That means you use red or better on here, and you use blue or weaker on top. Otherwise, the stud comes out and you can't get it apart. And there's just enough room to get the nut past that nut. And if you don't drop it. Yeah, it didn't hit the floor, that's a good sign. Just see I'm not self-conscious about looking like a t dumbass. I don't want to start for some reason. That's too big. Put a five ace on these. Okay. Looks like the bend angle looks good. Now, if the bend angle's not right, bend the bracket to fit right now. Uh, there's the problem with that. Is nope, it's fine thread. It's a real lock nut. Locks all the way. Find its self center point. Okay, just 
a little torque, not too bad. Now there can be a gap on the back side we're going to deal with. So here's the original bolt here, top motor mount bolts. You got a large head on one side, locking nut on the other side, mechanical locking nut. I'm not sure about that part being original, but probably is. Most things on this bike are. So you get a washer on both sides of the mount, and then you need something in between the frame and the bracket. Do not pull it together. So we have some different washers here. Two is probably too much. Oh, two looks good. Three in there maybe. Got a little shim washer here. That's nice. Alright, is that gonna fit? Ooh, look at that, it does. Ah, kind of. That can really fit. Look at that. Alright, we'll be back. Alright, now we're on this side of the bike. We're moving all over the place. Okay, where'd my uh, Loctite go? Somebody stole my Loctite again. There's the blue. You know, so the Loctite's always on the wrong side of the bike when you need it. Okay, we're going to use the red this time. We don't want the nut coming loose. This stuff's petrified already. Okay. So, we got a washer over here. If you put two washers in there instead of one good one, does that make it just twice as good? Probably not. Ah, son of a bitch. I knew I was going to poke myself with that damn thing. I just knew it. I wonder what the thickest washer I got is. The camera's in my way. I think I already used up my thickest washer. Yeah, that hurts. Somebody poked me right there. I don't know who that was. Some poker. Okay, this one's thicker, but a smaller diameter. It'll work. Maybe. I'll stack them together. What the hell? Stacking's usually not a good idea, but yeah, whatever. We'll see if I like that idea here in a minute. Let's see how the thick one looks on there. I'm thinking I'm just going to use a thick one. Perfect. I like the thick one. I don't like this skinny ass bigger diameter one. Let's lose another again. Unless I get that turned away from me this time, I can get my hand in there without hurting myself. Yeah, that still hurts. I have to go on medical leave here in a minute. The severe pain is kicking in. That'll happen. Okay, where's my uh, breaker bar at? Beats the hell out of me. There it is. Right in front of me. So, 13 16 socket on the back side. I hold that. We have a zip gun on this side. Tight, clip it tight in it. It just keeps turning. I think it's torqued enough. Okay, I can go on this side and torque the other half. There we go. Get out of my way. Alright, where's my torquing tool at? Yeah, I don't know. Hopefully it's on the other side somewhere. Remember, I already had the motor mount pulled down flat here, so it was already being held. You don't have to pull it down right now because that makes these mounts break. You want to have the bracket in the least amount of stress conditions you can have it. And I got my torque wrench right here. If it keeps moving, it's loose, right? The harder you hit it, the more it torques, don't forget. See, it has a nice curved face on here, so you can hit it multiple angles, so it'll be good. It's pre-made for this application. Ah. Don't hit your arm either, it hurts. 
Now, in case you think I'm destroying my tool, I've been doing that for about 40 years now with that wrench. Ain't hurting any. Okay, that's now torqued. So is this bracket. So, take this thing. That's supposed to move. I'm thinking that might be too stiff. What do you think? Huh. Wonder why that won't come out of there. I'm thinking that might be too tight. Ah, there we go. Yeah, that might be a little too hard to just work normal application of pressure. Yeah, I'm thinking that might not be that might not be the best. My guess is it's been flattened a little bit. You don't suppose there's something wrong with this tube, do you? I'm guessing it's bent right here in the front where it's supposed to be. Oh yeah. So I should have noticed that first thing. Had my head up my ass, wasn't paying attention. See how that's bent right there? That means this does not slide very well because this is not supposed to bend. So now we have to straighten this thing out somehow. Now, you know, does anybody know how to do that? Without damaging it, come on. Let me tell you or just do it? Let me just do it. Do it to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick this through here. Like this. We have a nut right here. Got a wrench. Not quite the right size, but we got a wrench. here. Yep, that doesn't work. Must be threes. There's a nice chromium polished style nut. Perfect for the application. Tighten that down. Now that whole sleeve is torqued straight. Now you can bend this thing and hope the bracket doesn't bend. You bend it until you think it's straight. <clears throat> you take your little jingle here and run it through and see if it fits. Chingus, not jingo. Still does not fit very well. Nope. <sighs> They got issues. My guess is this is bent too. You don't suppose this whole thing is bent, do you? Oh yeah. Take that off. <clears throat> no idea what's being bent. Better view of it. Ooh. Hey, it works now. Must have got it close. like it's supposed to, see? Only in that spot though. Put a different spot doesn't want to work as good. <clears throat> Alright. So now we can go ahead and put it back in here. I don't like this little thin nut. I'm going to put this nice chromium looking piece of crap one on here. It's probably just polished with a rust, but that's alright. <clears throat> I 
I don't know why they put a little sample nut on there for you can't get to it. Thicker nut, you got a better chance of tightening it. Okay, so now that works pretty good, see? Good. Now the problem is right up here in the end where that's all out, but <clears throat> we can straighten that a little bit by beating on with a hammer down here. Down here. There we go. Straighten that and straighten it through there a little bit. Oh, look at that. It's like, like butter now. Uh oh, somebody was watching. Look at that. Works real nice and free now. It's not all bound up. See, now you know what you do when it doesn't work. falls in and out too close. you got to put a bend in it. Maybe that's a factory when I took out. Yeah, that might actually work now. Look at that. Amazing. And you can adjust the knob here. Just put a choke it straight. That's very important. Of course, you have to use the official tool to tighten it with. There you go. See, look at that. Naturally, wants to stay with choke up where you can read it. Look at that. Okay, see? <clears throat> I can actually fix something every now and then. All right. Drop the screw on the floor. That's a good spot for it. Okay, we're going to attempt to put some oil on the primary down here now. We went down here. Okay, this is a gasket here. This is a pre-used one. We have a new one to use. New one. I'm gonna play a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna glue this to our cover. Now the part with the countersink hole is out, flat side is in. Don't forget. Here, get some magic goop here. We're going to glue this side here to the cover. The other side, we're going to leave it ungooped so you can get the cover on and off without destroying the gasket. And hopefully, this will seal enough it won't leak. If it doesn't, we'll have to goop it up too. Okay, I'm gonna get some oil in there. And don't leave this next to where you're gonna put oil. Otherwise it won't seal correctly. Okay. So we're gonna use some uh, Maxima primary oil. Because this is a primary here. See, let my light go. Oop. Told you I'd make a mess. Making a mess again. I'm good at making a mess. The primary cover's not big enough to put it all the way in there. Alright, we ran out of primary oil. But we did make a mess. I have an anti-mess tool here. Remember, go like that, make sure it's dry. That way you can feel the oil. This one's still dry. It's not wet yet. So I mean it's not pouring out the bottom back there. 
Okay, how much oil is in there? A lot in there. Take a little bit more, I guess. There's a lot in there. <clears throat> Uh, it had about this much oil in the container. So that's quite a bit, actually. I think I'm good with that amount. That was quite a bit we dumped in there. So you can see I'm only about halfway up the front here right now. But uh, that's all full of oil all the way in the back there, so it's going to fling it everywhere. So it doesn't need to be soaking in oil, it just needs to be an oil spray. I'll guarantee you it'll be spraying oil when that motor starts turning, spinning over. screwdriver into a Phillips head a bit because these are Phillips stock screws purposely did not put the one with the foot peg on there because this is a solo seat bike not a buddy seat bike so solo seats don't have the peg out the back of here buddy seat ones do he had both versions you have to pay attention to what the bike is okay. torque these in Good sign. Okay, so primary is done. We got one thing accomplished today. Okay, now for our coil nut up here, we only had the one bolt. We appear to be missing the other bolt, or stud in this case. It's a stud. So I don't know where the other one's at. I haven't found it yet. Might not have it. I don't know. I do have one though. Tools. Ratchet. Some electrical stuff that's supposed to be over here also right now that we're not using right this minute. So let's put that in like that. That's just enough to hold it. And this will be just enough to hold it also here. We will be back into here, believe me. I just want something up to hold the coil on the bike so I can hook it up and make the bike run. This is temporary. See how it rattles around? It's going to make all kinds of noise when it runs. But temporarily, it'll work. Okay, so I haven't found any plug wires yet for the bike yet. Okay, the other thing we have to figure out is the back of the vent hose here for our primary. I'm not sure. Oh, that's actually going to be rooted right now. 
I'm hoping it's going to go right like that and be able to shift it without tearing itself up too badly. If it doesn't work, we'll have to put it some other direction. Come up from below. See, it comes up right now instead of down, so that's the best way of doing it if it works with the shifter. Okay, so back here on this side over here, it comes over the top of the tranny right there. So you can pull up the slack we got up in there right now. How much slack did we really have? Okay, right now it's laying over on top of the clutch arm over there. Because I just pulled it down onto it. It's an oil line over here also. So, so you got a clutch lever going back and forth. Maybe a little more slack on that and get away from the arm there. So that way we're just sitting out here in the free, free daylight. So instead of coming out the left side of the bike over there, I'll go ahead and grab the hose here and we'll bring it out this side. Fingers in there, there we go. Okay, so now we just put it down this way. And we just clip that thing off right over here. You don't have to worry about it. Being nice and long like this does not hurt anything. Just make sure if there's any oil does come out, it drains down. No problem. All right, so that takes care of that problem. So that's our vent line. And we got our first oil line hooked up. That's the first one that's done. So now we're not using no more of this hose. Oh, that can go away now. All right, see, we're making progress. All right, uh, let's see what else we got to do here. I'm going to move on to the oil lines. All right, we got this clean up. Got a big mess around here. We'll be back.